Okay, so the first thing I assume you have is that you already have Visual Studio 2015, the Community Edition, so please make sure you have that and launch it so we can get started. All right, so I have Visual Studio now here, up and running. So you go to File New, and we wanna create a new project, and make sure that you go to Visual C++, and then highlight the Win32 project uh, option here from the list. Then let's name our project Tic Tac Toe. And hit OK. So now just hit Next. Of course, we're going to build a Windows application. And I think you should leave everything as is by default. We don't need to use ATL. SDL, security development, lifecycle checks, that's okay to leave. And let's hit the finish button. And now Visual Studio should create like a generic Windows app for us. So of course this is all built by, you know, by default. So what we want to do now is just make sure this is uh, compiling. So hit on the keyboard Control Shift B to build it. Or another way to build it is to go to the build menu and just hit, right now it's building, so once it, now it says succeeded. But if you want to build it from the menu, you go to build and then you hit build solution or rebuild solution. So it's already been built. So to run it, we click on the play green button here, or I usually like the keyboard, so I'm going to use control F5 to launch it. As you can see now, we have a Windows application just a generic application it has an about, about dialogue okay so this is what we get uh, from the wizard right from visual studio just an about box and a file exit uh, menu item and uh, to look at the code maybe just for those who are not familiar so basically this is what the wizard has uh, produced for us the the win main is the entry point of the windows application there's a global as you can see here the instance handle this will be restored stored in a global variable here called edge inst this is the current application instance this will be useful for us later on to load resources that we store inside the binary file the exe file so inside the win main you will see how it actually loads from the resource file two strings one for the application title and one for the window class so each windows application has the notion of of a main window and this window has to be registered with the system and the way you register it is by giving it a unique window class so initializing the instance would include registering that window and showing it up on the screen and then next there's this uh, accelerator table which we don't have to go into right now it's uh, think of it like just uh, some keyboard shortcuts that you can use with with your application you know like hotkeys for example control f if you want to handle that etc you again have to define it in the resource file and then that kind of thing so and next we have the typical windows message loop right where each application has a message queue uh, in fact a message queue is per thread and when an application starts there's a single thread by default the main thread that owns the window and the way uh, because windows is a, a message driven event driven by using messages that's how it how the operating system the windows operating system communicates with your app by sending it messages into the message queue. And then this loop here picks up the messages from the message queue and then start dispatching to our main window in this case. So this is just a quick overview. I don't wanna get you overwhelmed with the details, but just to get you an idea of how, what code we're dealing with here. And this is the function that actually registers our main window class so before you create a window it has to come from a registered window class and that window class will 
specify some attributes of this window that the operating system can understand when it wants to create an instance of it. So things like what kind of callback function, which is the window callback function. Whenever you get messages, this is the function that actually receives the messages from this message queue. And then, you know, which instance of the app, because you, you might have an app that runs multiple times, multiple instances, which instance is uh, registering this class, what kind of icon, and uh, what kind of cursor to use. And these are using like default system uh, icon. This actually icon comes from our resource file. So we can change our app icon by looking at the resource file for this. The cursor is just the arrow cursor. This is the background of the window. The internal of the window is white. There's a menu that we define on the resources. This is the menu that has the file exit and the help about. And then this is a window class that we have defined for our app. And the small icon also for the window. So, and this is uh, the first function. The second function is the initialize instance. This is actually gets called after we register the window class. If that succeeds, the next thing we want to do is create a window. And since this is the main application window, it's called an overlapped window. So this has the maximize, minimize button, and it has the system menu, and it has the title bar, and it's resizable. That's all embedded into this uh, constant, which is defined in, in some Windows header file. And some additional other you know, parameters, like in addition to which class, what's the title of the window, what's its width and height, location, etc., etc. So... After you create a window and you successfully create one, then the next thing is to show the window and update the window to refresh and send it a, a WM paint message. Next is the window procedure. This is where most of the logic of the code that we're going to build together is going to be inside this function mainly. So this is our callback function for the window. Whenever this is the one that processes the messages from the main for the main window. So whenever like, a, for example, if you hit on the menu file exit, you receive in this window procedure a WM command message. And in this case, it's going to be the ID of the menu item, which is exit. And then we destroy the window. That's how we exit the application by, you know, we created the window. So the way we, we close the application is by destroying the main window. And we will see in a minute why that's actually going to close the application. So the next important message is the WM paint. This is where we do all the painting of the window. This is how we draw inside the window client area. So this is where we'll be focusing most of our drawing code in here. And as you remember, we just, uh, we've seen here like how we destroy the window using the exit menu. Destroying a window actually posts uh, uh, um, or since a WM destroy to the window itself, to the window procedure, we receive a WM destroy. In that case, we say post quit message. And this is very important because this is the only way to exit out of this infinite loop here, which is in the win main, right? This is an infinite loop. This will keep going on forever until get message receives a WM quit message. In that case, this function will return a false and then it will exit out of the while loop. And that's what's happening here in WM destroy, which is actually posting that quit message, WM quit, into the message queue. It gets picked up by that message loop and that's how we exit the window. And then all other, there's like a gazillion Windows message, right? And with every new release of Windows, they might add new messages, some custom messages that some applications process, etc. So all other messages that we don't handle here just fall through to the default window procedure, which is defined by Windows and it handles all the remain, remaining messages that we don't want to handle at this point. And the rest, this is the about dialog and this is, this is pretty much all the code that we have. Uh, this is what the main uh, code that this uh, uh, 
wizard has created for us. On the right side here, you can see the we have one CVV file, which is this file, tic-tac-toe.cpp. We have an RC file. This is the resource file, resource compiler file. If you double click on that, this is where you see the accelerator table, the about dialog, the icon of the application. And if you double click on that, this is where you can change your application icon. The menu that we have, our main menu, right? We will see how later too we want to modify this, etc. So, yeah, so this is the basic app that we want to use for our tic tac toe. And uh, just one thing I know I mentioned that you have to have at a minimum. A Windows operating system. It doesn't. I'm using Windows 10, but it doesn't matter if you're using Windows 7 or 8, as long as you download and install a Visual Studio. I prefer the latest. Right as of this video, the latest is this one, which is the Visual Studio Community 2015. You just go to VisualStudio.com. This is the link, or you just go to Google and Google for you know download Visual Studio. It gets you to this link and make sure you click on the community free edition and there's of course there's other editions but we want to focus on the community free edition and I'm using the 2015 again okay so the other thing I want to mention here is that I prefer to use a dark theme I think if you go I've done this a long time ago but let me just remember where I do that go to tools options here you can see the color theme is dark. I think the default is blue or light. I think it's blue by default, which is like, look like looks like this. Let me just, uh, it's taking time to change. This is the default uh, color theme. I honestly don't like it. I prefer to be staring at a black background instead of white because it, it's too much light, it hurts my eyes. So I prefer to use uh, dark theme. Uh, you can use whatever theme you, you prefer. This is just my preference. And uh, I just got used to it for many years since they had this option added. I've been using it. So it's uh, my preferred option. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it uh, for this video. I wanted to introduce you to the uh, wizard code and how we want to build the game. In the next video, we will start looking at how we want to build the game board, etc. How we start adding functionality. So I think that's uh, good enough for now. And uh, let's move on to the next video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment or share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like us on Facebook. See you in the next video.